So you want to start cheating at miniature painting, and you're looking for the easiest ways to make it look like you know what you're doing. Here are the three things you need to trick people into thinking you're amazing at painting. Atmosphere, texture, and contrast. Let's get into it. So what is atmosphere? Atmosphere is the overall feeling of your model. From bright and cheerful to dark and ominous, these feelings are evoked based on the color palette that you choose for your miniature. Things like hue, saturation, and value all work together to tell a story through colors. The best place that you can see this in action is in the film industry. So let's take a look at a few common color grading techniques and the type of movies they appear in. Horror films frequently use a desaturated blue tint. This blue makes the atmosphere feel cold and otherworldly. Post-apocalyptic films are often done again in a desaturated sepia tone. This makes them feel dark and hopeless. And action movies are commonly color graded with teal and orange. These colors are complementary colors on the color wheel and are very exciting to the eye. This visual excitement fits perfectly with the intensity required for action movies. In this diorama, using models from this week's sponsor, Lute Studios, you can see that I'm actually using two atmospheres to create such a dramatic effect while also utilizing the action that is seen in the adventure color grading of teal and orange. So how do you choose an atmosphere? Come up with a story for your miniatures. Are they fighting in a cave that's lit by some sort of a strange, they wild purple moss? Or are they trying to throw a ring into a lava filled cavern? Or maybe they're on a beach at sunset. You get the idea. Once you have an idea of your atmosphere color, or even if you don't, check out colorpalette.cinema on Instagram. They have hundreds of color palettes for you to get inspired by. What I love about this technique is that they often use film stills which the color palette has been pulled from so you can see exactly what this color palette looks like in action. Also, there is often skin tones utilized in these color palettes, which I personally always find difficult color grading skin. So by pulling it from this color grading palette, the skin color is already chosen for you. I recommend paying close attention to the ratios in these color palettes. If there is only one very vibrant color in an otherwise muted or analogous color palette, use that vivid color sparingly. The ratios here are already set up for you. Just pay attention to the dominant colors and stick with what you see and you'll make it work. I'm starting with zenithal highlighting. For this type of project, I highly recommend zenithal highlighting even if you do it with just a dry brush instead of an airbrush, since contrast is so important in achieving our goals. I also recommend taking a photo of your zenithal highlights when you're done. My zenithal highlights include object source lighting from the campfire, but I'm also spraying from above to mimic a starry night sky. I use the airbrush several times through this video, but do not feel like you can't achieve this if you don't have an airbrush. Although it is a fantastic tool in this technique, it is by no means required. After zenithal highlighting, I'm going in with blue for my night side and orange for my fire side. Now it's time to lay out our colors. I'm not using a film still specifically, so I'm just pulling out general warm tones as well as my key cool tone that I plan to use throughout this project. If there's a color that you really want to use that isn't included in your color palette, you can pull it in line with your color palette by mixing it heavily with one of the colors that is in your color palette. With my colors mixed, I'm starting by applying my colors approximately where I want them. Though I want to keep my colors only on each desired element, I'm not focusing on blending at this time. I'm also quickly dyeing in the eyes with the dark blue. Use whatever color you would normally use for the eyeliner, which is typically a darker color of your skin tone somewhere between brown and black. Again, since the point of this technique is not to focus on the individual details, but instead create a feeling, we're not too concerned with the eyes. Okay, so the atmosphere is chosen, 
colors are laid out, base colors applied, how do we start cheating the eye? We're going to use the same trick that Monet and other Impressionist painters used in their paintings. We're going to give our audience enough clues and hints for their brains to connect the dots for them as to what they're looking at. When we look at this painting by Monet of water lilies, there is enough information here for us to be able to tell what it is. The flowing blue-green of the water, the light bouncing off of it, the greenish circles to act as the water lilies. If we compare this to an actual photo of water lilies, they look very different, but somehow our brain is still able to connect this painting with the depicted subject. That's basically what we're going to do with our miniatures. I'm slowly layering up my shadows and highlights atop my midtones using a hatching motion. Hatching or cross hatching is the act of applying lines or crossing lines of paint onto your model. What this does is it breaks up the color and is going to lead to our eyes skipping over that texture and seeing a smooth gradation. You can also do this technique with stippling if you would prefer working with that way instead. What happens when we look at this textured gradation is that our brains are going to mix those colors in our heads. And so we will see that smooth gradation even though it's not really there in real life. Let's take a quick moment to talk about today's sponsor, Loot Studios. Loot Studios is a monthly miniature subscription service that offers highly detailed STL files for your at-home 3D printer. The theme this month is Toll Collectors, which includes three unique heroes and the group of bandits they are facing off against, as well as NPCs for you to rescue and plenty of interesting terrain including tents, wagons, and a lookout tower. The models come pre-supported in 32 and 75 millimeter, which makes them perfect for your table or for your shelf. Loot Studios also provides lore, stat blocks, and bonus maps for their players and subscribers also have access to their Facebook community and Discord server as well. I highly recommend checking out Loot Studios. They are one of my favorite sponsors and I'm absolutely in love with everything that they create. Thank you so much Loot Studios for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to painting. Next, I'm applying a wash, which I honestly should have done far earlier in this process. But here we are. I'm doing a reddish wash on the areas that are facing the fire and then a blue wash on the areas lit by the night sky. I'm then feathering out those edges with water to prevent that harsh coffee staining that sometimes happens at the edge of washes. A wash can be a really effective way to add or pull in atmosphere. Basically a wash is a filter which is a great way to look at color grading overall. So if you feel like your model is falling apart and the colors aren't as cohesive as you want them to be, a wash is a great way to further intensify that color grading effect that we're looking for. After my wash, I'm redoing what I had already done and continuing with my cross hatching, highlighting, and shadows. When applying your paint, you do want it to be rough. The harsh edges often seen in layering, where one color ends and another color begins, won't trick your brain the way we want it to. So overlap your colors, work with dried paint where you've rubbed the majority of it off on a paper towel. Whatever you need to do to create that interesting texture that's going to help trick our brain. Even so, we do still need a gradation of colors. You can't just go from yellow to red and expect our brains to make orange. You do need to have intermediary steps between whatever your highlight and shadow color is. This could be anywhere from three to maybe even six layers, depending on the size and the difference between your two colors. To give the illusion of the fire's glow, I'm painting the midtones and shadows of those areas lit by the fire in a hue closer to what I envision the color to actually be. So you can see on her sleeve how it transitions from blue up at her shoulder down to a more yellowish color as we are getting closer to our light source. 
So these highlight areas that are facing the fire are going to be done with a more intense yellow to create that illusion. You don't have to do it this way. This is a more advanced technique, but it is a way for you to get in more information other than just the heavy atmosphere of the fire's glow versus the night sky. Cardamom, if you're going to be mischievous, could you at least do it on camera? Lastly, we are on to talking about contrast. Contrast is the difference between elements, smooth and rough, light and dark, saturated and desaturated, etc. Contrast is extremely important in miniature painting because of the tiny scale that we are working on. At this point, put your model down and take a close look at it. I can almost guarantee that you need more contrast. Look at your zenithal reference photo if you need to. What elements look lifeless? What areas bend and twist that you have painted as a single color? Here on her shoulder piece, we can see the waves and bends of the fabric. I'm taking some time to add more intense highlights and shading to those areas. Next, I'm going in and lining with a deep brick red. I was hoping to be able to avoid having a lining as a step because this is supposed to be really easy. That doesn't require detail work, but lining just makes such a big difference that I do still highly recommend lining as a step in this process. Lastly is another round of highlights. I'm going in with a near white and adding a few extra spot highlights. I'm using the edge of my brush and then catching those slight edges to help make the model pop. If you're watching this and thinking, damn, that's a really intense light with some really intense darks, you would be correct. That is what is going to make our miniature look amazing and that's exactly what we want. If you look at the difference between my shadow color and my highlight color, it's a damn impressive spectrum. And it should be. You should have this much contrast in your model as well. So if you think that you've pushed your contrast enough, unless the extremes are this far apart, you haven't. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was useful and helpful to you. Let me know what atmosphere you're going to be adding to your next miniature. Thank you so much Loot Studios for sponsoring me. I always love to work with them. They produce the most beautiful and intense and interesting models. And I'm always so excited when they reach out to me. Be sure to check out Loot Studios at the link in my description box, as well as the pinned comment. And a quick thank you to Dicey D Hobbies for helping me print these models, as always. If you like what I do here, the best way that you can support me is to join me over on Patreon, buy my merchandise, or buy literally anything through the Amazon affiliate links in my description box. Doesn't cost anything for you, it's just a little bit extra for me. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. If you use any of these techniques, tag me on Instagram because I love to see what you do, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.